I'm not very interested in this data of how many individuals right now are suffering and all that. Uh, it is ranked third among parasitic cause of death behind malaria and cystosomiasis, which we all know malaria is the first one, was first uh, parasitic. Uh, rank, first rank uh, parasitic cause of death. Then, uh, amoebiasis is a waterborne pathogen which is transmitted by the coral root. This you all know, this is the picture which is showing the uh, life cycle of. Uh, this uh, protozoa that ingestion by a cyst, the water infected by this cyst of amoeba goes to the stomach and then here it leads to formation of protozoid. This protozoid, either they uh, penetrate to the intestinal wall or they uh, lead to the formation of another cyst which goes out and infest more water and there is the coral root and then transmission is formed uh, human to human, large scale. Uh, then, uh, Means it happens by fecal oral route only, but it will then spread very fast in the community. So, penetration into this intestinal wall now, this trypozoid is multiply within the colon and they can then go further beyond and infect the tissues like liver. And uh, again, they will produce cyst and release into the blood, uh, into the gut, which will release the cyst as well as the uh, uh, trypozoid. So you can see there are four. Uh, so there are various types of cyst here. You can see a different types of cyst with amoeba. And you need to read this the whole life cycle thoroughly from your microbiology group. So this is microbiology book, sorry. So this is the everything is happening. Why it is important as far as pharmacology is concerned that we you can see the targets here. So there is a group of drug which we call luminal amoebicides. These are the drugs which are killing the trypozoid present in the lumen. So these, these are drugs like diloxanide, curate, paramomycin, and hydroquinol. These are luminal amoebicides. Then there are some drugs which are systemic amoebicides. Systemic amoebicides which are uh, acting extraluminal as well as intraluminal. That is outside lumen but in the wall of the intestine. So these are systemic amoebicides like chloroquine, uh, amatin, dihydroamatin. And there is one group of drug which is mixed, that which acts on luminal amoeba as well as tissue amoeba. So systemic as well as luminal activity that is metronidazole. So with that, let's proceed. So these are some available, or you can say the classification of antimicrobial drug, tissue amoebicide, luminal amoebicide, and mixed. So in tissue amoebicide, again, uh, they divide it into intestinal and extra-intestinal, while one is only extra-intestinal, like chloroquine. Chloroquine will not act on the trypozoid which are present there in the intestinal wall, but it can act on the trypozoid present in the tissue. So we call it extra-intestinal. So if you remember, I told you in the indication of chloroquine, there is one indication extra intestinal amoebiasis also go there. So you need to remember all the other indication of chloroquine other than malaria. Not only malaria, but chloroquine is useful in many other diseases like extra intestinal amoebiasis here. Then there are two group of drugs. One is nitromidazole, which we say midazoles. So I am saying you that bendazoles are antalmetic and nidazoles are antiamoebic. Don't get confused. So metronidazole, tinidazole, Technidazole, ornidazole, septanidazole, these all nidazoles come under uh, nitroimidazole and which are uh, obviously mixed and in that also intestinal as well as extra intestinal. So they are targeting everything luminal as well as non luminal, in non luminal intestinal wall as well as extra intestinal, that is the liver. And hence they are the prototype drug for treatment of amoeba. Then comes luminal amoebicides where you find uh, diloxonide. Uroid, nitta, zoxanide, uh, quini, odochlor, diidohydroxyquin. These are hydroxyquinolins, not uh, aminoquinolins. If you remember, aminoquinolins comes under the treatment of malaria, which is important, quinine and uh, chloroquine, that comes under hydrox aminoquinolins. It is, this is separate group. Source of uh, drugs are same, but 
the chemical is different hydroxyquinolones and some antibiotics tetracycline and paramomycin are also useful in treatment of amoeba so let's see what is uh, because metronidazole is the prototype drug we need to read it thoroughly and it is originally discovered and used for trichomoniasis in 1959 so it is not uh, used for amoeba earlier but later on the efficacy in amoeba was found out and it is now the main group of drug of choice for treatment of amoeba and not only amoeba it is a drug of choice for treatment of anaerobic bacteria as well broad spectrum cytokine activity against protozoa like entamoeba stylitica t toxoplasma vaginalis giardia lamblia and not only that but anaerobic bacteria as well like bacterioid fragilis clostridium uh, porphyringis h pylori h pylori is uh, very important to read and the gat is completed and you may remember that uh, uh, in quadruple and triple regimen and treatment of uh, h pylori induced pud optical ulcer disease metronidazole is one of the component of that regimen Resistance, no significant resistance for endometriosis till now, but developed for top T vaginalis. So this is the mechanism of action, which is important as far as metronidazole and other immidal midazoles are concerned. Like drug enters the cell diffusion, and the nitro group converted to nitro radical, and this nitro radical competes with biological electron acceptor. for electron generated pfo pfor pathway which is pyruvate peridoxine oxidoreductase pathway pfor means pyruvate peridoxine oxidoreductase pathway and finally it disrupt replication and transcription and leads to cell death this is the mechanism of action of metronidazole and this is what you need to remember pharmacokinetic it is well absorbed from small intestine that's why it is able to act on uh, extra intestinal uh, tissue as well widely distributed in body secretion like vaginal secretion semen saliva cecf it is metabolized in liver by oxidation and glucuronidation half life is 8 hour so it is given it hourly adr is most common adr with uh, metronidazole is apart from nausea vomiting this metallic test is very very common means as most of the patient with metronidazole will complain of metallic test so it is very important to advise them uh, beforehand so that the compliance will improve that it can cause metallic test with that advise the patient uh, tolerate it because otherwise they were they are in uh, you know Uh, fear that something bad is happening to them. It is it, that's why it is very very important to advise before and that it will cause metallic taste. It leads to develop some taste uh, problems, and uh, very less frequently it can cause headache, glossitis, rashes, dryness of mouth. Overall, the tolerability with metronidazole is very very good. And on prolonged administration, peripheral neuropathy and CNS effect can be seen. Very very high dose. Uh, a seizure can be noticed and from oplopril as if uh, it is used by iv root first time is of pregnancy mein metronidazole is contraindicated but in rest of the time it can be used because first trimester is basically the phase of organogenesis where most of the drugs are contraindicated actually and not only in pregnancy but also in neurological disease blood dyscrease and uh, chronic alcoholism because it is a drug again known to cause disulfiram like reaction and you will see what exactly is disulfiram like reaction so don't worry about it and you need to make a list of drug which can cause disulfiram like reaction because you need to advise your patient that during the treatment of these drug which are causing disulfiram like reaction you should not take alcohol otherwise there will be severe symptom to that and uh, also interacted with enzyme inducers like you know barbiton and rifampicin so because there are inducers that induce the metabolism of metronidazole and hence uh, reduce the therapeutic uh, efficacy of metronidazole and while cimetidine uh, is inhibitor of that uh, metabolizing enzyme it will inhibit the metabolism which leads to increase the toxicity of metronidazole so those need to decrease this we all know what is the interaction between enzyme inducers and enzyme inhibitors this no need to repeat it again and again so this is very important that uh, they are useful in uh, various conditions because they are broad spectrum anti amoebic drug and uh, first is amoebiasis 
so invasive dysenteries and liver abscess 800 mg tds this dose you need to remember so treatment of uh, the uh, drug regimen for treatment of amebiasis contains uh, orally if you are giving it is tablet 800 mg tds for tds means thrice a day for seven days or in pediatric forty mg per kg per day mild intestinal disease in 400 mg thrice a day for seven days can be given so this is very important uh, that uh, this uh, many a time the patient stop taking uh, metronidazole before seven days or before five days because symptomatic relief and that leads to risk of development of resistance so it is very very important to complete the whole uh, duration of treatment as far as antimicrobial drugs are concerned so you need to uh, motivate your patient to complete the regimen even if they feel good in one to two days they must take it for at least five days then comes giardias is where 400 mg thrice a day for seven days the same kind of uh, uh, regimen trichomonas vaginalis 2 g single dose is sufficient or it can be given 400 mg thrice a day for seven days the so 2 g is very very high dose but if patient tolerate it can be given and additionally intravaginal treatment and uh, both partner treatment then in anaerobic infection it is a drug of choice uh, which we already discussed the whole topic of treatment of anaerobic infections pseudomembranous enterocolitis again it is a drug of choice and second choice drug is vancomycin so 500 mg uh, thrice a day for 14 days is required because it is very very severe life threatening condition and apart from that ulcerative gingivitis is also one of the you all know other micro imidazole apart from metronidazole you use anidazole secnidazole ornidazole and setranidazole uh, as compared to metronidazole tanidazole has lower metabolism and hence the duration of action is lower so mostly single drug can be helpful uh, your rate is high and better tolerated as compared to metronidazole so nowadays uh, they are using The practitioners are using tenidazole more than metronidazole. Then comes secnidazole, and uh, there is nothing much about it. It is again rapid absorption, but slow metabolism. And another is ornidazole and setranidazole. This setranidazole is 14 hours are life, so it is better tolerated. Plus, no nausea, vomiting, and metallic taste. So, no disulfamylation, neurological symptoms. So, all the disadvantages of metronidazole is overcome here with setranidazole. So depend on depending on the affordability of patient, we can choose our treatment in that case. Then comes these imatinib and dihydramatin. Uh, the mechanism action of uh, imatinib is they inhibit the intraoral ribosomal translocation of the RNA amino acid complex in the, which leads to inhibition of elongation of peptide chain, which ultimately inhibit. Synthesis. So, imatinib and dihydramatin are basically protein synthesis inhibitor by this mechanism, and uh, it it affects prostate but not the cyst. So, cyst may spare, and which will leads to further infection. So, to to do complete care, we need to choose the drugs which are active against cyst as well. Because cyst will otherwise again go to the uh, to the you know community through the oral uh, contamination. It will. Again, infect some other person. So potent and rapid action, symptomatic relief in one to three days, but not curative because hematin they are not given as monotherapy. They are always given along with other drugs. And another problem is that they are uh, available by parenteral route in the form of subcutaneous route, which is preferred, and intramuscular also, but never IV because with IV they can cause severe toxicity, and you will see the IV profile. So that's why they are not used nowadays. And oral preparation are absorbed erratically and leads to vomiting. So imatinib name name is because that they are causing emesis. That's why the name of it. Actually, these drugs are mostly used for treatment of poison. When the patient comes with the poison to eject out the poison from the body, imatinib are used. Right, this ipecacuana is used to emit out the poison. That's why the name imatinib is given. But Uh, later on, they found that they are useful in uh, killing the uh, amoeba, so they can, they could be used, but with these side effects. Now, uses is that they are reserved drug for 
severe intestinal and extraintestinal amoebiasis. See the word reserve drug. Because of their toxicity profile, they are only reserve drug. If other drugs are not uh, helpful, if patient cannot uh, take metronidazole because of contraindication or if the compliance or tolerability is not there, then we can use this reserve drug. Emetin. And with emetin, luminal amoebicide needed to be added, but with metronidazole, it is not needed because metronidazole acts on the luminal a lot of side effects with emetins and hence the use is not preferable. Like local stimulation, pain tenderness in the area of injection, this is a side effect of root, not the drug. Uh, gastrointestinal tract discomfort like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal cramps, neuromuscular blockage, muscle weakness, discomfort, it can cause cardiac toxic toxicity as well, like arrhythmia, CHF, and content indicated in these patients, like patients of cardiac diseases, renal diseases, young children, and pregnancy. So, ultimately, these are these are old drugs which were used earlier before. This imidazole group, nitroimidazole group was there before that we used these drugs. But now these their use is obsolete. Chloroquine kills trapezoid of antimicrobial acetolytica uh, in extraintestinal part only, not in the So luminal and mucoside need to be given. It gets concentrated in liver. If you remember, the volume of distribution of chloroquine is very, very high, which leads to uh, a, a, Increased concentration of chloroquine various still, which is actually responsible for its long term use side effects as well. But the advantage here is that because of its it get concentrated in the liver, it is very, very useful in treatment of extra um, extra intestinal, that is hepatic amoebiasis. And it completely absorbed from upper intestine, not effective in invasive and luminal dysentery. So, this is the reason why it is not helpful in luminal dysentery because the absorption is very good. As soon as you give the drug, it gets absorbed and goes to the system circulation. So, it will not remain there in the cell part and hence cannot kill the luminal uh, amoeba. Efficacy in amoebic liver is equal to hematic, but longer treatment and relapse. This is the advantage with chloroquine. And it is used after a course of metronidazole, but luminal amoebicide must be added. So the dose is same: 600 mg state and every 300 mg for two to three days, similar as that we in malaria. Then comes the thyroxinite curate luminal amoebicide. They kill propagate responsible for production of cyst by some unknown mechanism. Still, the proposed mechanism is that this uh, drug, when we have orally dialoxin curate, did hydrolyze to get free into dialoxanide active uh, metabolite and 90% of this is absorbed. So it will be not useful because uh, these are luminal amoebicide we need to remain there in the intestine. So only 10% reaches to the large intestine which exerts the effect. And that mechanism is unknown and hence the dose is as such that 500 mg thrice a day is given for 10 days so that the 90% get absorbed and the rest 10% is active in the amoebicides. So, it can be used along with metronidazole and ad adverse drug effects are, they are already, uh, almost uh, similar to metronidazole that is tolerability is good. But the problem is that platelets is one of the common problems which uh, uh, make patient less inclined to use this drug. Then comes nitazoxanide, which is a container of niclosamide. And it is a newer drug for treatment of giardiasis and cryptosporidiosis, but also effective in other amoeba infections like antamoeba, cyclitica, toxoplasma, vaginalisis, and H. pylori. Mechanism of action is uh, it is a prodrug which converted to tizoxanide after absorption and inhibit the same enzyme which metronidazole was inhibiting that pyruvate adoxin oxidative enzyme. And EDR uh, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting attack, mild one. Then come this group, 8 hydroxy quinolins, that is idoquinol. Quinine, Odoclor, 
they are again absorbed very less amount 10 to 30 percent and which is good so they act against entomology rdr right and not only that they are also helpful in treatment of some fungal infection bacterial infection so they are purely luminal amoebas amoebicidal agents with any tissue action and not effective in acute dysentery but useful in chronic intestinal amoebiasis so these are the drugs which should be added with those uh, amoebicide agents which are not having any luminal action adverse effect because they are having iodine in their chemical structures they can cause iodism that is goiter and one severe uh, side effect related to this group is subacute myeloptic neuropathy smon that is the inflammation of optic nerve causing complete or partial loss of vision and also peripheral neuropathy so mostly the amoebic infection get treated by metronidazole which is a safe drug very rarely these agents uh, may be used these are the earlier when this group metronidazole was not in uh, use these drugs were the first line drug in treatment of uh, these amoebiasis and with the with this uh, the treatment of amoeba is finished so we divided it into three groups one is extra luminal one is luminal so in extra luminal is uh, intraintestinal and extraintestinal and similarly there is a group of drug which is mixed so with that the treatment of amoeba is finished uh, let's see the drugs for treatment of leishmaniasis here you can see uh, again you need to read this infection uh, visceral leishmaniasis and there are cutaneous and subcutaneous also this all you will uh, you can see in your microbiology so this visceral leishmaniasis known as kalazar which i already told you is also known as black fever so do not get confused with this term black fever and black water fever black fever means kala azar kala black fever azar azar is the urdu word maybe i don't know which language azar is also a word for fever and black water fever is the another name given for cerebral malaria so don't get confused and this visceral leishmania is caused by leishmania donovani transmitted by bite of female centri of genus plebotomus available drugs for treatment of leishmania is antimonial uh, sv or the pentavalent antimony which is also known as sodium stibogluconate then there is drug pentamidine then there is some antifungal agents which are what is drug of choice empotrexin b and ketoconazole very less effective but is there and apart from that multipotin cetamicoin and paramomycin are the drugs which can be used in treatment of leishmaniasis so see this uh, drug sodium stibogluconate is drug of choice but some resistance has been developed uh, water soluble pentavalent antimonial compound it is a water soluble pentavalent antimonial compound the uh, mechanism of action is uh, proposed as this pentavalent is then converted to trivalent antimony which rapidly efflux glutathione from the protozoal cell which leads to oxidative damage to the Uh, protozoa and death it is not metabolized and excreted and changed in urine after intramuscular injection so it is not toxic for liver but toxic for kidney and those is this which you need not to remember adr is again uh, very very mild like nausea vomiting metallic taste but qt prolongation is also been seen with sodium stibogluconate another drug is pentamidine mechanism of action of pentamidine is it binds to dna and inhibits the replication of dna those we need not to remember toxicity is important as far as pentamidine is concerned because of the histamine release it causes acute reaction and acute reaction like histamine related all the actions you will see like what we see in shock anaphylactic shock with fall in bp rise in pulse rate tachycardia hypotension dyspnea palpitation like these conditions other reactions are like rashes mental confusion kidney and liver disease also seen with pentamidine and cytolysis of pancreatic beta cell initially leads to insulin release which causes hypoglycemia but later leads to insulin dependent diabetes mellitus so this is this is some uh, important examples of drug which are uh, you know uh, interacting with the 
hormones and hence leads to some conditions like IDDM by pentamidine and uh, goiter by iodoquinone, uh, iodoxyquinoline group of drugs. Then uh, pentamidine can be used in uh, sodium stribogluconate uh, failure as a salvage therapy. But now amphotericin is a drug of choice. The problem with amphotericin B is its cost, especially liposomal amphotericin B. So it is also in treatment of leishmaniasis with TB. Pentamidine can also use in treatment of pneumocystis gyrovesi pneumonia in AIDS patient and trichnosomias. Now comes amphotericin B. We already discussed everything about amphotericin when we discussed antifungal agents. But uh, uh, here, uh, nowadays, it is a drug of choice if you afford it. Otherwise, the drug of choice is sodium stabilizer if there is sensitivity. Antifungal drugs which can be used as an alternative therapy for visceral leishmaniasis is resistant to sodium stabilizer. The liposomal form has shown excellent efficacy. Uh, disadvantage, you all know that uh, is, uh, is uh, very, very expensive. And there are some non-liposomal uh, amphotericin B can also be used, but the toxicity is very high. Like toxicity. Then comes multifosin, which is uh, uh, Alkyl phosphopolyne analog, we need not to remember it. The mechanism of action is it interferes with the lipid metabolism of parasite. Not much uh, the mechanism of action is known, but these are some proposed mechanism of action, single line mechanism of action, which you need to remember if, if some short note on multiposin comes that it interferes with lipid metabolism of parasite and it is used in treatment of visceral leishmanias. It is first orally effective drug and is administered. By 2.5 mg per kg daily dose, no need to remember the dose. So, to prevent development of resistance, combination therapy with paramomycin or uh, AMP is amphotericin is promoted. So, ADR is GI toxicity, liver enzyme, uh, liver toxicity, nephrotoxicity, and it is also teratogenic. But the name you need to remember. Uh, the drugs which can be used in treatment of leishmaniasis, is all these names, multiposin. Uh, then comes paramycin, which is aminoglycoside antibiotic. So it is, it is uh, all the mechanism action and everything is related to aminoglycoside. And WHO recommends its 21 days treatment as an alternative to multiposin. So these were those were the drugs in treatment of leishmania. Then comes trypanosomiasis. These are the four drugs which are used in treatment of trypanosomiasis. This is the last protocol infection which we are discussing, which, which, which we will finish up with antiamibic drug. So these names, suramin, pentamidin, melarsoprol, ecolor, nitin, you need to just remember that these drugs are available for treatment of trypanosomiasis most of the time. Only suramin uh, is need to discuss uh, in detail, which can be asked otherwise. Other are just name, just to remember the name are enough. So, drug of choice for early hemolympatic African trypanosomiasis. Now, you need to read this trypanosomiasis thoroughly in your microbiology. There are various forms and various types of infections. Here, you are talking about hemolympatic trypanosomiasis, where the pseudomine can be used. It cannot close blood brain barrier, so it is not useful for meningoencephalopathic phase stage of trypanosomiasis. Only for hemolymphatic stage it is helpful. And the proposed mechanism of action here you can see is drug binds to host plasma protein and uh, uh, form a complex which enters drug uh, it, uh, complex like uh, hello hmm. okay. okay so this complex then enters parasite by endocytosis and uh, then treated by lysosomal protease enzyme of parasite and then ultimately this drug reaches to uh, lysosome up inside the cell and inhibits the enzyme, various enzymes which is required for survival of protozoa. Pharmacokinetic is not absorbed orally, so given by slow IV route. And drug sensitivity testing is required because it can cause hyper uh, sensitivity to the patient and potentially ADR may lead to the shock and death and hence DST is required. So, Merazoprolol is another drug 
plant arsenical agent and it binds to SH group in protocol enzyme, altering the structure and function. It is quite toxic drugs, low IV infusion is required. CNS effect is seen reactive with encyclopathy like cerebral edema, super coma. Due to diaclorosite or some ADR, not so important drugs to remember. Again, this is just a name. Aflor, anything if you remember that is used in treatment of uh, trichomyces is enough. So this is all about uh, anti-amoebic drug. So I am launching one last poll here. With that, we will finish our topic. So this is and very, very simple the question just to know the attentiveness of the audience. So right now, 203 attendees are there. And your time starts now. One minute is over, 36% of you voted. Last 15 seconds, 42% voting is there. Okay, so voting percentage decrease and uh, the Okay, the question is albendazole and metronidazole are anti-amoebic and anti-amoebic respectively, which is false because albendazole is anti-amoebic and metronidazole is anti-amoebic. So false is the correct answer. 36% of you is still marked true, unfortunately. So with this, I'm ending this topic and I'm ending this session as I need to go. If you have any doubt, please ask me in personal chat in WhatsApp. Thank you very much.